Hello everyone and welcome back to another installment of the Talks Lot Boys present this month in music for the month of November 2020. I, as always, am your host. My name is Tyler and today I am joined by the boys. We got Brennan. What's going on, folks? And we got Kyle. Holy cow, hi. Guys. Pff, fucking music, right? Shit's crazy. <laughs> Shit's you know, fucking lit. It, it's so crazy that we're going to talk about it for an excessively long amount of time. Wow. Uh... And, and boy, gosh darn it, boy howdy, holy shit. I was not <laughs> expecting there to be so many fucking super, super sick albums to drop this month. But like, between all three of our playlists, I think we've got some some real bangers to talk about today. Hell yeah, bro. I was pleasantly surprised by both of your playlists. <laughs> um, I wasn't surprised by mine because it was mine, but... Uh, there's there's a, there's there's some albums I want to talk about today for sure, and a couple singles, but mainly some albums. Uh, what what should we what what do you want to what do you want to start with? I mean, we can just start by saying you know the thing that we already talked about, which is the Bill Murray album that came. out. Oh yeah, out. yeah. We uh, for those of you who don't know, Bill Murray released Eggy Pocket this month, and um. For the sake of time, we're we're gonna skip right past that because we did a full hour long review uh, of that a couple weeks ago. So if you want to hear us gush about Bill Murray's new album, uh, go to our channel and watch that video, and you get a full oh, yeah. hour of us just sucking Bill Murray's cock. That's, only an that's hour. That's basically though. all it is. Only an hour. Yes. <laughs> only an hour. Finally, Honestly, we only probably... we got it under an hour. Yeah, Unprecedented yeah. in the history of the channel. And then we did it again with another episode right I after. Know. It's incredible. And no one who complained about the time watched either. So, I mean, it's chill. They, were, they already <laughs> gave it's not even. It's all right. All right. For, all, for all of you people that are complaining that these are way too long. They're not listening you, to this. <laughs> you must have never heard of, like, actual podcasts before. Ooh. Damn. Tell, it, tell, tell them straight. Tell them it's it's a shame that none of the people who think this is too long are listening to this because they think <laughs> it's too long. It's like, yeah. the, like the average podcast is like two plus hours anyway. Oh, yeah. I yeah. mean, like, let's be real. Like, like Joe Rogan's popular and his are like four hour long marathons. Well, oh, some yeah. of them. I would argue he's just like the most popular podcast at the moment. Exactly. But he is hey. Joe Rogan. It's just people hey. don't want to listen to us because we're not famous. We'll get there someday. Well, yeah. We're basically but. together one Joe Rogan, right? Like the three of kind us, of, like yeah. our mental capacity combined. We're like the Joe Rogan Triforce, you know, put us well, together. I think, I think if the Joe three Rogan. of us hit some DMT, we would be <laughs> Joe Rogan. You're not wrong. Are you guys not hitting DMT when you record these? Oh. Uh, what? Um, <laughs> Tyler's Tyler. cooler than I thought. <laughs> Cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> Cut that out. We, Cut it. We can't have a, a, a moment of doubt that Tyler <laughs> might, be, <laughs> might be doing DMT his, during this fucking podcast. His, uh, his vascular supremacy isn't saving him here. <laughs> uh, That's why I have the garden hose. It's just filled to the brim with DMT flowing through my veins. I don't actually uh, lift. It just like blasts through me. You have like a DMT gland. Yeah, basically. I'm like I'm like Bane. I just like shoot up with DMT. <laughs> My body just fills with it. You must be in like just a constant state of euphoria. Oh yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> I don't even know what sadness is. <laughs> <laughs> Never heard of her. I only cry tears of joy. And pure DMT because it's just basically. <laughs> yep, basically. I just every any, every fluid that, that comes out of, out of my body, body. <laughs> just straight DMT. <laughs> oh my, so my anyway, sweat, DM my piss. <laughs> DMT <of> aside. <laughs> yeah, which one of these albums made you feel like DMT, Kyle? Um, I'll tell, Ooh. dude. A couple, a couple actually. Um, and they were both actually no. I'm gonna say there was one album from each of our playlists that made me feel. Like, what I imagine it's like to be on DMT. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. So do you We're want me... Do, what, <laughs> what, should we start with the one on mine, the one on Brennan's, the one on Kyle's? Do it. That wasn't an answer. I'm just <laughs> going <laughs> to... I'm going to start, start with my my least favorite of the three. That's fair. That's where I was on mine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I surprisingly, I, I thought that each of you had 
more pristine albums than I did. But the big the big album drop for me, which I didn't even fully realize was coming out this month, was the new Coletta album. Hell yeah, bro. And shit was as weird as I had hoped it would be. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> like this shit was like psychedelic as hell. It was just it's it's everything that I want from Coletta, except better. Cause like, you know, their first their first EP was Ait. You know, they've never been one of my favorite bands. They're also like super nobodies so i mean like i don't even know if anyone's ever heard of them but they're a very weird band they've got clean vocals they've got unclean vocals they've got rap they've got a lot of like weird instrument picks like a lot of like uh like chimes and just weird synthy shit mixed in and some very tasty drum parts just it's a it's a weird blend but they make it work and that's why I like Coletta, because they're a very unique sounding band. I don't know of any other bands who sound anything like them, at least in bands that I listen to. Um, so they released a new album, and I've been talking about them kind of sporadically throughout uh, each episode of this show, because I think ever since we started doing This Month in Music, they've been releasing singles building up to this album. So I have touched on this a bit in the past, but the album lived up to my expectations. The way that the songs like flow into each other like sometimes you can't even tell when a song ends and another song begins because it's literally just like one cohesive piece dude i was um, feeling the exact same thing i had to yeah. check my phone so many times when i was listening to it because i was like wait did the song change and i had to look <laughs> it's crazy you said that That's, that was exactly my experience listening to it the other day <laughs> yeah and like it's crazy too because like they have a lot of callbacks to other songs from like earlier in the album like, they have certain chord progressions that, like, mirror, um, like, other chord progressions and other songs. So it really makes it feel like the whole album is just one huge piece. And I just think that's so fucking cool. There's enough distinction between some of them that, like, you can you can tell that, like, you know, this is a different song than the other one. But, like, overall, it's just, like, one consistent vibe. And the way that they just kind of flow into each other. It's also cool because, like, it kind of loops. Like, it, the album kind of ends the same way it begins. Mm -hmm. So it's just kind of like an endless, infinite song. That's basically what the album is. It's just one really long, infinite looping song. And I think that's so fucking cool. Um, so mad respect to those guys for, for crafting that because, holy shit, I enjoyed it. Not one of my favorite albums um, of all time by any stretch. Um, not even my favorite album that came out this month. Um, I would say I still like the Bill Murray one way more than I like this one. But the fact that I got it and the fact that it was just really cool and really different, um, just really made it stand out to me a lot. See, I, I thought it was interesting that you said that it was your least favorite of the three, because it might be my favorite of the three. Really? In fact, yeah. Wow. I really vibed with this album, bro. Like, Damn. All right. I listened to it twice be in a row. Because Holy shit. <laughs> I got done with it and I was like, I want to listen to that shit again. And like it looped back to the beginning and I was like, we're going again. <laughs> I man, you were you hit it on the head, but like with like the way that it flows together so perfectly, it is really just a solid ass, like full, like artistic expression, this entire album. It flows together. Yeah. Cause oftentimes you'll have an album where it's like individual songs and like maybe the themes don't match up or maybe like like you said the callbacks to other parts of the the music at, at different times with the chord progressions and stuff but um i don't know man this this album impressed the fuck out of me i really was especially because like I have a really weird relationship with this album because every time you put a single into your, your <laughs> playlists i didn't realize that they were like because <laughs> like, it kept on showing up with like the same uh <laughs> art every time yeah. in your list and i was like that's where they keep using the same art for all the singles and then i, I realized <laughs> i think it was last month i was like oh shit wait it's an album coming out oh oh damn <laughs> so like it feels kind of like this journey i've been going on over the last couple months through your mm -hmm. playlists like experiencing them slowly and being like oh all right i can get down with this and then to hear it all like all those puzzle pieces connect together and then just flow the way it did. Damn, bro. I was really vibing with it. I really liked it. Specifically, yeah. I liked Bloom, Sweet Nothing, and uh, Juicy were the three that oh, yeah. like, super stand out to me. But all, all of the bangers. songs, all bangers, man. Yeah, like, man. I, I know you were saying it like wasn't like your like album like 
anywhere near the album of the year. It's also not in my albums of the year, but like it's an honorable mention to like the top 10 for sure. For sure, definitely. Because I think that this this album as far as just like what an album does all together and just one flowing piece. We've talked about it a lot when we do our individual views. This one this one knocks it out of the park. I was very impressed. And it's almost like those Bill Murray vibes except with the, without the heavy shit mm-hmm. kind of with the way that they get a little psychedelic with it, a little weird. They're not as meme but, you know. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's hard to be meme than Bill Murray, though, to absolutely. be fair. I don't know if I like it more than the Bill Murray album, because the Bill Murray album was incredible. But it's it's close for me. I honestly still haven't mm-hmm. decided which one I like more at this fair point enough. for this month. But I wanted to tell you that I was surprised Dang. you said it was your least favorite, because I really <laughs> liked it. I mean, I really liked it, too. Just, like, of the three, it's the one I've listened to mm-hmm. the least. And maybe that's just because, like, I've been listening to the singles a lot leading up to it. Um, yeah. And, like, the other shit that I discovered through your playlist was just completely brand new to me. Mm-hmm. So I've just been vibing with that stuff a little harder. But, like, it's- man, I was, like, I was really impressed with this album. Like, yeah. I, I didn't really know what to expect from it, mm-hmm. but it surpassed my expectations and i really enjoyed it um brandon what did you think i liked it um i'm probably in the same boat as tyler as far as saying that it was probably towards the bottom of albums that came out this month and i don't mean that in a bad way whatsoever right i liked it i was kind of nervous though because the singles Although, like, the songs themselves are different, they literally follow the same exact song structure. Yeah, kind like, of, yeah. Like, to a T, almost. Mm-hmm. And, like, even though I like how it sounds, like, I, I think that, you know, they're obviously, like, diverse tracks. Like, you don't hear you don't hear a lot of bands doing, like, rapping and singing and, like, you know, synth wave and, you know, a little bit of screaming, like, all at once. So I thought it was, like, a neat little package, but I was just afraid that, like, every single song was going to sound the same (laughs) right? or at least like follow like a similar path. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was glad to see that the album didn't do that. Yeah. Like, like you guys said it best. It's almost like just a long, like a super elongated song. Mm -hmm. And I've (laughs) Tyler, you and I both know that that's not always the best thing Mm -hmm. because I remember, you know, we've always talked about this before, but, we went and saw a Dance Gavin Dance at Mr. Smalls, and one of the <laughs> bands that opened up for them was called The Contortionist. And granted, the songs were incredible, but it was like one big song. Yeah. Because like the songs really didn't end. It just kind of like coasts into like another song. Right. So and it's a, it just felt like a 45-minute song, which this album does, but it still is good. Yeah. Like, and not actually... to say that the contortionist is bad. I just think that like no. there's a time and a place for that. And like at a concert where you're not there to even see that band, it was just kind of a lot to have to like wait through. Oh yeah, <laughs> like, it took when you're waiting for your favorite band ever, and you have to sit through a 45 minute long song. It's a little much, but uh... <laughs> yeah. But this but this album like really pulled it off. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I listened to it a few times, and man. I... It... Like I said, it, it pains me to kind of put it. I mean, like, like there's a, another album or another couple albums on your list that I'd probably put below it, but I'm not really mm-hmm. sure uh, what else you're gonna speak about. So yeah, we'll see. Um, well, the only other one, the only other album on my list that I I even wanted to like touch on. Obviously, like I had a bunch of albums that came out this month. Um, I really liked the Bearings album, but, like, I don't have much to say about it, so I'm not really going to take up a lot of time. I'm just going to say, you know, if you like Bearings, go listen to their new album because it's pretty good. Um, But the one, the other one on my list specifically that I wanted to touch on, which I've been building up to for months, is Makari released a new EP, and I really like Makari. Um, And it was, it was what I hoped it would be. You know, it was really short, which was kind of disappointing, but... I wasn't necessarily expecting to get new music from them this year anyway. So just the fact that we got anything just made me happy because they're another one of those bands where like, I feel like they just have a very unique sound. So whenever they release shit, I just want to listen to it because like they don't even have that many songs out to begin with. So I don't know. I was just excited that they were releasing stuff. And I don't know what you guys thought about 
that EP or if you guys even like listen to Makari at all. But um, I think the vocalist is that Andy Sizlak guy or whatever. <laughs> yeah, like um, Sizzik he, or whatever his name. Yeah, is. and he does vocal features on like a billion things, but. Um, yeah, I always see his name, and I never really connected to Makari. Yeah, but, like through your playlists, I have slowly connected the dots. Because like with your playlists, like so far this year, this this month seems kind of like a like a resolution to a lot of your singles that have been coming out. Because you've yeah. like just sprinkling in the Makari stuff, the Coletta stuff, and it's all coming to fruition here. Right, because you're seeing the final <laughs> pieces. It was honestly like a little like like closing a little book on on some of this year with your your playlist this month for me i was like oh this is where it was going to awesome yeah because it was really good i really like the makari ep it it is makari is a band that is both chill and exciting at the same time to me and it, yeah, it, it is impressive to me because i i never know if i want to be hyped to it or if i want to just kind of let it vibe because mm-hmm. they they do a good job at having like really fast music moving music that isn't like nerve-wracking but like not in a bad way you know like mm-hmm. uh, it kind of heightens your senses a little bit when you're listening to it yeah. you're just like oh shit like, you know it's 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 exciting but in a in a chill way mm-hmm. i don't really know how to describe it but i really yeah. i do like it a lot I, I i get what you mean though like i i've never really known how to describe their sound i think they're more of like a i don't i, I don't want to say philosophical but that's kind of like <laughs> it almost <laughs> the feels vibe like i it, get from honestly. like what they're what they're trying to go for right yeah we're like, like, we're like making up genres sure yeah <laughs> but like philosophy um, rock my favorite I, genre. With, <laughs> <laughs> philosophy core yeah philosophy <laughs> core <laughs> yeah so they're like very light philosophy <laughs> core right you know not not delving fully into the depths of like I, I went uh, down to the record store and I got the new Philosophical Core album. <laughs> Man, that shit blew Jesus my fucking Christ. mind. <laughs> but like they, they have Literally. this really kind of like Kyle was saying, like they just have this this weird balance of especially with this EP where it's like mm-hmm. it's it's really like chill and like kind of mellow, almost like somber in a way, you know. But then they have like fucking dance beats. And, like, just, like, really cool, like, drum shit. And, like, I it doesn't make sense. And I don't know how it makes me feel. But it makes me feel something. And I like it. And that's why <laughs> I wanted to bring it up today while I had the chance. Because who fucking knows how long it's going to be before they release more music. So I had to take this opportunity to just bring it up. They are good. Go listen to them. This oh, yeah. EP <laughs> and the, the album prior. <laughs> Very good. Nice. Anything before that is fine, but like primarily <laughs> this EP and the one before. Well, Tyler, you know, you mentioned that that EP was a little short. Yes. And I'm about to drop the fattest seg we've ever seen. On my list, there happened to be some <laughs> albums that were too short. Are you going to talk about the one that I really like, though, that was You're also right. really short? You're yeah. right. Because it's still a banger, but it's only five songs. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it is Phoenix by Dirty Loops. But it is so good, though. It, it is so good. But here's the thing, right? I'm going to pull it up just to double check the dates on this, right? But only two of those songs are new. Yeah, I did um, notice that. Like, as a person who doesn't really follow them, it was yeah. all new to me. But I did see that most of those songs had come out as singles before. So I can understand how that's a little disappointing. Yeah, I was very getting hyped up for this album, and then I saw the track list the day that it dropped, and it had trouble dropping too. I know they're not like a huge band, so yeah. like I'm not, you know, whatever. Similar to another album that came out this month that's not even on my list because it never dropped on Apple. It's the <laughs> rapper Rav. Uh, he never put it on Apple because Apple is being stupid. So I just kind of listened to it on YouTube. Check it out if you want. It's pretty good. It's called "I'm On to Me" by Rav, but whatever. It doesn't matter. It's not on my list. Fuck it. Uh, but Dirty Loops, right? So. Uh, what were the other songs on that album? Rock You came out seven months ago. Damn, I didn't realize that came out that long ago. <laughs> and that's the most recent of the three. Uh, Next You came out over a year ago, and Work Shit Out came out almost two years ago. <laughs> oh my god. So yeah. wait, so these guys basically pulled a Paris. Yes. But yeah. even more so. I guess. Yeah. 
but That's you see, disappointing. it's <laughs> not as shit. bad as Paris in my mind because everyone thought they were breaking up oh. after they released those three songs. There was like a really long period of time where they didn't make anything and everyone was like, what? So like, what's happening with Dirty Loops? And then they were just like, they started dropping like random little songs called like Songs for Lovers. And I thought maybe that was going to be like its own little EP, which maybe it will in the future. But there's a couple like little like three minute like just jam sessions called in each song is like something really like all weird titles, but they're all under the the grand title of songs for lovers. Uh, <laughs> so we'll see if those come out. They're really awesome. If you want to check them out, they're on their YouTube channel. Uh, gotcha. But yeah, I don't know it because like I adore rock you next to you and work shit out specifically yeah. work shit out. I adore I they're all of them are absolute bangers. Uh, and I, I love them already, so that's why I'm not nearly as... And the fact that this album is just like, yeah, we're, we're still going. You're going to get some more shit out of us is mm-hmm. also, like, more of a... Because, like, to compare to the Paris album, it was like, oh, we know Paris is around. And then they were just like, nah, it's not as good as you wanted it to be. With this, it's just like, surprise, we're still around. And yeah. we've got some new stuff in here. You know, like, it, yeah, it's it was a basically totally different like they... setting. Yeah, it, it is it is very different. Like mm. it's it's still disappointing that like they didn't come out with more new stuff, but just the fact that they came out with new stuff mm-hmm. when I guess you didn't know if that was even gonna happen or not kind of makes it better. Yeah. Um, I that's why it's not really one of my personal faves of the month, just because there's really only two new songs on it. Yeah. Uh, it's still a absolute banger. Yeah. But both the Colette album and the Bill Murray album edged out for me just because it was all such new stuff. Fair. Um, and just really yeah. hit me in a way that really impressed me more so than I thought it would. But, you know, the fact that the album's short aside, this album fucking slaps. It is uh, so good. The two, I uh, forgot the- <laughs> that Dirty Loops existed. I remember yeah. vague memories of you showing me them when I was like blackout wasted one time. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it was covers of like kids. Baby and, <laughs> uh, by Justin Bieber and a cover of Rolling in the Deep by Adele. Or probably the two yeah, episodes, that yeah. yes, yeah. that's what they were. So like oh. I never, I never heard any of these songs off of this EP album, whatever. Mm-hmm. So like it was all new to me. So I was like into it. Like mm-hmm. I, you told me that they released new shit. I was like, oh right, I think these people are good. And I, I loaded it up. I heard like the first fifteen seconds of Rock You, and I was just in. I was in it, and I just was fully absorbed by this by this album. I listened to it like three times in a row. Like I just I wanted more. Like it was so fucking good. It was so funky, so groovy. It was like Rock You specifically sounds like Michael Jackson mm-hmm. meets Closure in Moscow. <laughs> <laughs> and it's such a good vibe. I love it. Oh my gosh. That's You're a not wrong, fucking, bro. That's a dynamic right there. It's a dynamic that actually exists somehow. And it's called <laughs> right. Dirty Loops. <laughs> oh my god. Like uh, yeah, just no. wizards of music, these guys. Yeah. Oh my god. It, it is nutty. If you ever if you guys ever get the chance or anyone listening gets the chance, look up the like the videos for these songs on YouTube because they're playing them live, so you get to watch them just like effortlessly fucking pull the shit off the vocalist is like playing the piano and just singing and just absolutely like shredding the fucking keys and also just doing like the sweet milky runs that he does all over the place (laughs) i I said he has sweet milky runs i'm so sorry i'm gonna just get that (laughs) cut out of context (laughs) yeah probably not the best but his his vocal cords are beautiful and they just go every which way that i'm not ready for and it blows my fucking mind uh, the bass player looks super gothy and is really has me, really weird facial expressions while he plays. But he also is like one of the most talented bass players I've ever seen in my life. He's just going off. And then the drummer is just like, he has like a way of just always doing something completely unexpected. Like, <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, he's really, he's got it locked in. And then he just goes on a trip and I'm just like, it works? What, what, what's happening? And it's, uh, I don't know, it, together they just create such a, incredible dynamic that i've legitimately never heard before like i've never heard anything like these guys and for that alone that's the one i wanted to talk about the most because it is it is just an experience it's so good and the two new songs are really good too world on fire is a bop and breakdown is like more of like a power ballad and i i love that they did like a power ballady song it's really good too so Mm -hmm. uh but yeah Breakdown, I, I didn't like as much as World on Fire, which is why World on Fire is on my list, but go and check the album out yourself and you can listen to all of it, but yeah. Yeah. 
It's awesome. Yeah, I, uh, I remember yeah. first time I heard Rocky. I, that that's exactly like Tyler hit around the head. Like I was thinking, like this is like Michael Jackson. <laughs> like how the fuck? It, it was like Michael Jackson meets like. I mean, Tyler says closure in Moscow. That's probably the closest. <laughs> but because it's not like I mean, it's not like metal, but it's like. I don't know, man. It was, it was like out of left field. I, I totally wasn't expecting to listen to hear that when I listened to it. But I had never heard of Dirty Loops before. So, mm. yeah, I don't think I ever got to show them to you. Like the because like, I showed Tyler them like a long. It was time a ago. while ago. Yeah. But yeah. The, I mean, other than that, the only other album I really wanted to touch on, really the only uh, other album on my list other than the Bill Murray one, is uh, the Three O album by Sean Martin and Friends. Uh, I don't know the other guys, but I know Sean Martin. Uh, and it's super, it's super jazzy. It's a jazz album, very classic jazz album. Mm-hmm. The thing I like about it a lot is that a lot of the songs have a lot of variety to them. Like sometimes jazz albums will just feel like a similar thing over and over again. Kind of like Brennan, how you were saying about how you were feeling about the Coletta album where you were like, it was kind of like the same exact like pattern just over and over again, but then it ended yeah. up being not being that. That's kind of how a lot of jazz albums will go where they do the same kind of progression and they just do different stuff over top of it. So it kind of feels repetitive, but a lot of these songs had a lot of different things going on in them and it always kept it kind of refreshing. Uh, so I think it's really cool. If you can check it out, it's really, it's a good time. But yeah, that's about it for me for albums. Right. Cause my, my album is officially the shortest album or playlist. I mean, it's the <laughs> shortest playlist I've we've ever put on the show at, oh, at the moment. Kinda, it's yeah. at, it is at an hour and 21 minutes at the moment with 19 songs. So oh, Yeah, that is yeah. that is like weak sauce compared to anything else we've ever Absolutely. compiled before. Although, but I got to say real quick about 3.0. Oh, yeah. Uh, what up? I mean, about especially the song Kaleidoscope. Like, I'm a big fan of like bass lines. Mm-hmm. And damn, did they fucking... Yeah. Like, they <laughs> tore up the bass. I mean, it was legit. I was sitting here um, thinking like, damn, this is funky. Like, damn. It, it was... Uh, another thing I totally wasn't expecting, but yeah, mm-hmm. the, the, I mean, like I said, I'd never heard of Sean Martin before. I remember you like mentioning him, mm-hmm. but couldn't say I'd ever actually like listened to the guy before. Yeah. He doesn't do a lot of but. stuff like by himself. He usually does it in groups. So the fact that he kind of releases his own, he's, a, I think he's released maybe two albums in the past, but they were a while back. So it's okay. cool to see him do some more like his own run like he ran a little group of people together to do something because cool because like i said before i mean this while ago so you may not remember but he's a part he used to be a part of snarky puppy he still is he comes in sometimes but uh and as everyone knows snarky puppy is my favorite band ever so i love to hear him do his stuff because he absolutely tears it up in snarky puppy so he always tears it up and like like you were saying that bass line at the beginning that's the first song on the album is kaleidoscope and it goes off and you start hearing that bass line and the way they're grooving and i'm just like oh this is gonna be a good album i'm ready for this like it sets the tone and it's it's a good tone it's very good (laughs) i'm glad you liked it though it's yeah like mm. for a second i thought i was in like a like an old starsky and hutch episode (laughs) Fuck <laughs> yeah! <laughs> like, I was like driving perfectly. around like New York, like with some shades on, like just God having damn. this shit bumping in the background. Yeah. Like that is the vibe. That's I've great. Never thought of that way, but I mean, that was, you, you absolutely <laughs> placed it for me. I'll never think of Sean Martin ever again without oh. Starsky and Hutch. <laughs> yes. Oh my, oh my God. God. Oh, yeah. But Brennan, what, what do you got do? for us? What do you got? What, what do you bring into the table, sir? Well, dude, can we start off with like <laughs> the coolest fu- that, of I, I mentioned earlier? There were like three albums that I specifically wanted to talk about today. One on each of our playlists. There was one on yours, Brendan. That might be my favorite of oh everything. Oh my gosh, it's you got to be talking serious. about intervals. It was intervals. Yes, Holy <laughs> fuck, dude, oh. that shit was tasty as oh, yeah. fuck. <laughs> it like it like opened my third eye. I have not heard such fucking incredible instrumentals in a long time that was like polyphia on steroids shit was clean <laughs> yeah. as fuck. that's exactly how i was thinking it too is like it's like oh my God. i haven't heard anything like this since polyphia like this is yeah. incredible <laughs> oh yeah this is probably this is well this is probably the best instrumental work since uh new levels new devils came out from polyphia i, I can agree with that 100 I mean, percent <laughs> I mean, interval slaps. I mean, I <laughs> I, I didn't know they were uh, 
coming out with an album until uh what was it we did last month's episode mm-hmm. and you were talking like we were talking about oh what's coming out next month like in november like, what are we looking forward to and then i happened to stumble upon someone on twitter saying oh yeah dude fucking uh uh intervals is coming out with an album and i'm like what <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, was, I was like happy because they're like i mean they're what is it their first thing came out in 2014 so like, they've been around for a minute mm-hmm. but uh but damn dude like circadian i believe it's how you pronounce it but damn it fucking mm-hmm. as tyler said it, it rocks the house like oh yeah my personal favorite is probably string theory although i mean that that's like Picking your favorite kid, I think. I know. It's like every song on that album was a banger. Which What song was the one with the saxophone? Dose. Because okay. that's probably then that, my Then favorite. that was my favorite just because there was yeah. saxophone in it. I mean, it's, <laughs> it, when a song says featuring Saxel Rose, you oh, know it's that about it was? to hit yeah. so hard. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Saxel Rose was the guy who played saxophone on the State Champs acoustic EP on gotcha. that one song. A couple I knew ago, I knew yeah. it from somewhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Saxel <Holy> Rose. Shit. <laughs> what yeah. a great name. <laughs> my, I actually had a bit of a grape with that song, and I know that's hard to say because this album slaps, but... During like the last quote unquote chorus of that song, the sax is doing like the exact same thing as the guitar, and it's kind of hard with the way it's mixed to like discern sax from guitar in that moment. And then near the end again, it kind of they break apart. I kind of wish it, the sax was doing a little bit more of its own thing because I I just want more saxophone <laughs> like all the time, and yeah. it was kind of hard to hear it within the mix. But like it's every time argument. it did come through at other points, it was majestic and made yeah. it my favorite song. Yes. But but yeah, that's really like, my only bad thing I could think of about this entire album <laughs> is that that one like <laughs> twenty second part of the entire album was like that could have been mixed differently and I would have been happier. And every other moment I was crying tears of joy. Oh like, yeah, it, it I just so, feel uh, much like any time that saxophone just appears in an album that I'm really into, like it just comes out of nowhere. And makes me stop and just go saxophone, and then I just get even more into it. Like it's always, it always just makes things just a little bit better when they're already amazing. I feel like it happens. I feel like I've talked about this like multiple oh, yeah. times in past months. We have it happened, yeah. Bill Murray. It happened with uh, that State Champs album a few months back. Like just the, and, saxophone and honestly, makes everything God. better. It just really does. It just means saxophone's getting added into more things the more we talk about it, which is should be the new norm. Saxophone real, core. Yeah, yeah That's what sax I core. Sax core. That's what I need. <laughs> Give me more. Like, I, I remember the first time I heard it, I just thought of Shrezzers. Yeah, <laughs> I thought the same thing. And I guess I didn't know this. I, I guess I never actually looked into, like, the band's background. But it's literally just one guy. What? I, get, I mean, I guess right now it's just one guy. What? Yeah, his name's Aaron that? Marshall. No if way. if that's literally just like one guy doing all the parts of that and just mixing it, like that makes it even more impressive. I mean, it says it they were was. like past members, so I don't know. Oh, uh, okay. I don't know. I But still, I, I mean that's fucking Someone hard. in the comments tell us what the deal is with them because if that's just one guy, then Yeah, like, cuz when you go to the, the most page, talented guy on planet Earth apparently. <laughs> apparently, like like, because when you go to their page on Spotify, it's just one guy, like, standing with his guitar. Shit. And, like, I'm like, wait. So I, like, looked it up real quick, and, yeah, it's just, uh, I mean, he's the only guy they have listed in members. That's crazy. So, okay, <laughs> so this shit just that's... got even more. Oh, my God. Yeah, because they haven't, uh, I mean, they have, like, live members and stuff, but, uh. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, like, the last, uh. What is it? Like the the past members, they haven't been in since 2015. Oh, so. Well, then I mean, I'm gonna <laughs> assume that this guy at least like wrote this entire album by himself, which is just insane. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. What the hell? You know, I I just read some stuff on it while we've been talking, and apparently the past members are because he tried to turn intervals into like a full touring band. With, like, a vocalist, even. And then oh. it just kind of fell apart. It doesn't say why. And he was just like, fuck it, I'll do it on my I'll do it on my own. And that's why it's just him now. And I guess he doesn't really Damn. tour anymore. Oh, my because, God. Because, like, he tried to. Yeah. That's impressive as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. 
Yeah, so I'm even it, I'm even it, like it more like, mind blown to this. It seems like each album he has like some people come in and assist with some things, but it's like him masterminding it. That is crazy, dude. Damn, dude, bad respect. I already loved this album. Now I love it even more. <laughs> Just because holy dude fuck, fucking that's like that's mind blowing. I can't, I cannot wrap my head around that at all. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> well, yeah, intervals, everyone. They uh, <laughs> or he, they, I don't know. Uh, the, man, circadian. This, like I said, for a month ago, not even knowing it was going to be released. I mean, like this shit was awesome. That's like, that's like the only yeah. word I can use to justify like the entirety. I mean, it's not long. It's yeah. only eight songs, but yeah, yeah, like each song just packs a fucking punch. All right. The more that I look at it, I'm realizing that he each album is like a new thing that he creates and then brings people on to do with him. So like gotcha. it's often different people. So it's not just him doing all the parts, but it's him coming up with it and then having people come to do, it, which is yeah. still mad impressive. Still impressive. Like, uh, yeah, because yeah. he's still creating it, like yeah. just not actually playing the parts. So that is Good still Lord. wild. Yeah, man, that's that is crazy. I <laughs> wow. <laughs> Excuse yeah, me. I but, mean, uh, banger of an album, absolutely. Yeah. Are there uh, well, any other albums that you want to discuss, Brennan, before we move on to singles? Uh, there's two I want to talk about real quick. Um, okay. One of them I'm barely going to spend any time on, really. Uh, there's a band called Within the Ruins mm-hmm. yes. that released a album called Black Heart. And basically, uh, they, to me, they kind of sound like old after the burial. Yeah, I can get that vibe for sure. Like, especially with their guitar tones. Like, they sound like, uh, oh, I can never remember after Burials, that record. It might be like In Dreams or something like that. But yeah, they, I mean, the the tones sound similar, but then they're like really intricate. And um, I don't like the clean vocals in it, though. They do have like some weird cleans that come in. But it, it does kind of seem out of place a tad with what they're doing. Right. Around mm-hmm. it. But it, it, cause like it's not bad. It's just, I, not even like contrasting the other, the instrumentals and stuff. It's just, it kind of feels like two pieces that were put together, not like one yeah. whole unit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. That's like, that's I didn't much dislike it. I just didn't it. think they needed them. You yeah. Know? Right. Like, they could have gotten it, away with just doing unclean vocals for the whole thing. Yeah. You know what I felt with this album, Brennan? And it like, the moment I listened to Deliverance, I was just like, I don't know if you guys ever played Castlevania, but yeah. it sounds okay. like exactly like Castlevania music. And it made my entire day. <laughs> I can kind of get that. <laughs> like the guitar, you mentioned like the guitar tones and shit. And it sounds like identical to like the Castlevania theme music <laughs> tones that the guitar is using that. And I was just like vibing and I was like thinking about me playing Castlevania back in the day. And I was like, oh shit, I'm digging this. And I mean, I liked it because like it was good also, but that also helped. <laughs> <laughs> I could totally Dude, see vibing. like playing. I mean, it's. I mean, I've never played Castlevania before. Is it like a like a fast paced kind of game or no? Um, it like it's like a classic like side scrolling platformer action game. You're like a, yeah, okay, yeah. Well, that, that's pretty much precisely the game I could yeah. see. Yeah, <laughs> like playing while listening to this. Yeah, it is. It, it fits it so per. I could. It, you could have told me that was the soundtrack to the next Castlevania game, and I would have been convinced. Like, I, I wouldn't have second-guessed it. <laughs> but we're not here talking about video games. We're here talking about freaking music. <laughs> Brennan, what else do you want so, to talk about? Yeah, I mean, I like that album. Although, hmm. like I said, the, the clean vocals sound just a little bit out of place. But uh, anyways, the final record I want to talk about. And I showed Tyler some of it when he came over. Because um, the last song on it is kind of like, a dark Dr. Seuss book. Oh yeah, that's like the, that's like the only way I could describe <laughs> it. Um, but it's called uh, your your receding warmth from a band called Boundaries. <laughs> what a fucking and title for an album. <laughs> I guess. All right, so there's some history that, <laughs> that I guess has come to light. Unfortunately, when the album came out, I guess 
uh the vocalist's like ex-girlfriend like came out with a bunch of like rather like damning things oh. about the guy a lot i of guess L-O's. i i mean you know how in high school like there's always a senior that dates a freshman yeah yeah it's kind of like that kind of shit oh um at least that's what i've gathered from reading stuff on twitter so <laughs> i mean take that with a grain of salt that's but fair. uh I guess the dude like totally owned up to it and he's like taking a hiatus. So good for him. But like reading like a lot of the lyrics and stuff, uh, the album seems to indicate the opposite where like he talks about, you know, like the album title, you're receding warmth seems like, you know, this person that like was in a deep emotional relationship with this guy, just like slowly like pulled back and eventually like, faded away from like dating this dude i guess Mm -hmm. damn so (laughs) yeah i mean it's there's a lot of subject matter on that throughout the album um musically uh the last two songs are like really dark um like i guess emotionally but the rest of the album it's like you blink and you miss a breakdown like it's (laughs) yeah it's heavy (laughs) it's nuts uh of course, the vocals have like extreme distortion on them, so then they're kind of like down in the mix. But I mean, the instrument, the instrumentals are pretty much what you come for as far as just like brutalness and mosh pits and all that good stuff. So I liked it. I, I mean, for what it is, like I'm not saying this is like fucking intervals or nothing, but I mean, it's a solid record. But mm-hmm. I don't think it's my record of the month. But we'll come to that. Fair enough. We'll get there. We'll get there. But you know what we're going to get to before we get to that? Some gosh dang, mother dang, daddy dang singles. Ooh, baby. Shit. We're, we're, we're moving on from the tomb baskets, and we're opening up those sweet craft singles, and we're ready to place them in our singles. musical mouths. Let's oh, get man. into it, baby. Pull up with the, the tomb baskets. <laughs> Dude, there were two singles that came out this month that I was not expecting, and I was ecstatic just without even hearing them, just seeing that they were released. Oh, boy. I was just hit with a wave of pure jubilation. And luckily, the songs lived up to the hype that I built up within seconds of clicking on them and listening to them. (laughs) Um, First up uh, is from a little band that you may or may not know that I really, really like. I may have talked about this like maybe a couple hundred times just in podcasts in my life. Uh, Wage War released a new song, uh, a B-side for this whatever they're doing for uh blueprints but uh yeah surrounded and it was standard wage war goodness <laughs> and i dug it a lot <laughs> it it is very reminiscent of blueprints i mean it obviously is. that's yeah. when they recorded it but yeah i mean it's it's like they're like older sound and it's refreshing that they've come out with it now because i mean i Pressure is kind of polarizing for them. Yeah. Uh, their last album that came out. I mean, there are certain songs on it that I absolutely adore. But then there's other songs where I'm like, I need to skip this. Like, right yeah, now. no, I'm the exact same way. I definitely think that Pressure was like their low point so far. Um, like you but said. But this single. Um, yeah, no, <laughs> this single, like it, it just, it sounds like their return to form. <laughs> Even though, I mean, obviously it was recorded like a while ago but still it's just refreshing to hear that uh after you know their last album um i just i really fucking liked it i was not expecting them to drop anything and they hit us with this and i was like i'm all about it i listened to it like a hundred times this month (laughs) i just (laughs) i love wage war (laughs) they're one of my favorite bands um so i was just ecstatic when i saw that they were releasing new shit um and then of course, this the one it. that we all know that we have to talk about. Unprocessed released a new song, and while it's not as good as real, it's very close. The song is called Dead Rose, and I think I've listened to that single more than any other single this month. I, I want to say I've listened to it, like, every other day, like, at least once. 
Like, I just, I can't stop listening to it. It's just too good. Unprocessed is just musical wizardry, and I can't, I can't get enough of them. And this song just slaps so hard. Like, I cannot stop listening to it. It's too good. I liked it too. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I was gonna say I, I don't, don't want to like say something, but no, yeah, I I thought it was a banger too. I I definitely had high expectations for it, like way too high of expectations for it after their last song that we looked at. Fair, but which was called Real, right? Was that what it was called? Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. Um, because that song blew my socks off, but just because it was like my first time really getting into them. Same. But I was just like, everything's going to be that level. And this song is an absolute banger, but I don't think it hits that level still. So I don't think it, it didn't hype me up as much as it, d- as it seems to have done to you. But I listened to it a couple times still because it's still a fucking slapper. Yeah. The instrumentals in it are absolutely soul tickling. And <laughs> gosh darn it, call me Elmo because I was laughing on the floor with these sweet tunes because. Ooh, what the fuck? <laughs> T- tickle me Elmo. That was the. No, I got it. That was just yeah. like a really weird allegory. You're, you're oh welcome. I, it's late. I'm tired. And uh, tickle me Elmo allegory. Here we go. Uh, but no, uh, it was really good. Yeah. <laughs> what, Brennan, what do you think? <laughs> the, uh, the first time I heard this song, I wasn't too big on the verses. Like, where it's just bass and, like, him singing. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know why. I just wasn't, like, a big fan of that. Although I like how, like, it matured. And slowly, like, things, like, come in. And, like, you hear, like, guitar go- like a little bit of guitar going in the background and, like, accent it. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I mean, that is literally the only thing I dislike about the song. Other than that, it is incredible. I don't I don't think it touches real, though. I think No, real I don't think just, it does either. Yeah, like like real is just like yeah. in like next level stratosphere, and this is yeah. like eh, it's up there, but it's not yeah. there. Like, exactly, it's still it's still good. I mean, it makes me wonder like with the contrast of both songs, like what's their next like album, EP, whatever release gonna be like? Like, I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, but For Tyler, sure. yeah. I think there's one you're forgetting about. Is there? And it's a long one. Oh, oh shit. shit! I know what you're talking about. Yeah, holy the, shit! Uh, Aviation's released their uh, remastered version of their original EP from like 2012 or whatever. They released a 12 minute extended version of Outliers. <laughs> oh my god! I think it was 12 minutes. It was super it's, fucking long. It's 11:36. Like, yeah. So long. And I mean, Aviations is incredible. I mean, we talked about them to death on the last episode. I feel like we've said everything we need to say about them. But like, that is, we've talked about songs being journeys before, but like, Jesus Christ, that's like, (laughs) that is like a short film in musical form. (laughs) (laughs) It just goes and it goes in so many different directions. There is so much happening. I don't understand how somebody could be that talented for that many minutes straight, but I mean, they did it. And <laughs> is this a song I'm going to listen to often? No, because it's 12 minutes long, but like the fact that it exists is impressive. So <laughs> I thought, I thought I was going to have the longest song on my, on, on a playlist with work shit out being like eight minutes long. But then <laughs> of course you bring up aviation. I was like, ah, well there, there fucking goes. It's out. <laughs> I've been blown out of the fucking water. It's over. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Tyler, was... you <laughs> you told me to check it out, and <laughs> I gotta say, th- this was the song I actually listened to the most. Really, damn! From my playlist, I respect I thought, that. I mean, like every morning, like on the bus, like going into uh, the plant where I'm working at, mm-hmm. like this song would play at least once. Damn. All right. Well, I mean, it would only play once because that's all. Well, I right, yeah. For, I mean, you don't have time to listen to it. I have, have like time for like this and like a few other songs. I'm like that's it. But it's I mean, like half the length of the Bill Murray EP, <laughs> one song. Oh my god. <laughs> it has like everything though. It does. Like, I mean, it's incredible. There's there's beautiful instrumentals. Um, 
the guy like the vocalist does like incredible harmonies like with like oh, yeah. layering yeah I, like that part that shit blew me away like he's like singing and then all of a sudden like this harmony comes in and it's like whoa like de- like and then there's like a breakdown well there's piano and then there's a breakdown and there's like horror film piano going on like yeah. during the breakdown <laughs> and i'm like because like like during the song like you hear a little bit of piano like throughout i mean sometimes it's like the main driving force of the song but right like during the breakdown like we just hear like two notes like frantically and like like quickly <laughs> it's just it's like a horror flick. i'm like dude that adds like so much of a dynamic to like what oh, is I just know. a nasty part of the song it's so fucking cool dude oh my gosh it, it, <sighs> Dude, I was about to say, I'm like Tyler, I cannot let you not talk about this song. <laughs> like it, it was that, like it blew me away. Like, holy shit, Aviations. I don't. Yo, you're probably not listening to this, but goddamn, like hit yeah, me dude. with some more, please. They are just immensely talented. I really, really hope that they come out with some new shit soon, because like, oh my god, <laughs> they are just <laughs> insane. If you oh, haven't god. listened to them. We said this like a million times in the last episode. If you have not listened to Aviations, do yourself a fucking favor and listen to just everything they've ever made because it's all just incredible. <laughs> like, oh my god, they're so talented. God damn. Oh man. All right. Was that all you got? Yeah, that's that's all I really <laughs> wanted to touch on. Honestly, just those three. I feel like I said so. that like the worst way possible. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man, you done. You, you done, done yet, yet man? Come on, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, no, what do you what do you guys got for singles? What do you guys want to talk about? Um, well, step out of the way, Brennan. I'm taking the spotlight. It's my dude. That was totally. Are we going to the corner? To you. Tyler, you know what? I was gonna wait on it, but. Because you're so excited, let's hop on over to Kyle's YouTube corner. Play, Play the intro. YouTube <laughs> corner. There it is. <laughs> oh, that shit cracks up every time. <laughs> there it is. Welcome to Kyle's YouTube corner. This week, we've got the same old, same old people in here. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't have variety. Um, you know who's in that YouTube corner all the time? Fucking Family Jewels, and he released, I have two songs on my playlist this month from him. Uh, he released more, but I picked two. One of them is his version of Shambhala, what a, I think that's how you say it. Uh, it's one of the boss themes from uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses, uh, and it's very, like, like EDM-y. Like, he brought in a guy named A-Rival to work with him on it, and it's, like, heavy shit mixed with, like, some like breakdowns as far as like like almost like dubstepy kind of stuff it's really neat i like it a lot uh i mean the song slaps so the fact that he incorporated that kind of stuff to it and just kind of heightened it with his his guitar solos and shit was rad as fuck um but the one from him this month i really liked was his cover of good riddance um featuring her name adriana figueroa figueroa that's probably how you say it i just got nervous uh but the two of them have been dating for a very long time. They both make music on YouTube. And it was like their anniversary or something, like a couple year anniversary, I think. And they did it together. It's a song from Hades, uh, the video game I have gushed over many times, which got nominated for Game of the Year. Congratulations, Hades. Uh, and for the soundtrack. So this is one of those songs. I mean, not this version, but, you know, whatever. But their cover of Good Riddance is really cool because it's a very stripped down love song beautiful love song and Jules the guy who plays guitar freaking sings a little he doesn't do that very often he does some some falsetto stuff some very high vocals and it sounds really good and I liked it a lot it was a very pretty duet and the fact that they did it on their anniversary made it heighten that emotion even more and I liked it a lot and it impressed me G- good job family Jules <laughs> that's the YouTube corner stamp of approval right there for you I tell you what um other than that uh, I almost put some Insane in the Rain music on this month, but next month is the release of the Year of Sinnoh, and that thing is a thick-ass boy, so I'm <laughs> going to spare you this month, and we'll talk about it later. Uh, but not next month, because we're not doing this, we're doing, well, I'll talk about it in the year in review, because you bet your sweet ass I'm talking about it about this year. <laughs> it has been 
the year. <laughs> it's, oh yeah, that's the point of the album. But people who we'll don't the- like our long pon- podcasts are going to fucking hate our year yeah. in review. It it's will, gonna. I'm it's not gonna even s- going to attempt to make that short. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be. It's long. gonna be a fucking monster. <laughs> you see how long the month long ones are. We're gonna talk about our like, year. Yeah. we're gonna we're gonna cut it down. Obviously, we're not gonna talk about everything. But yeah, mainly but, it's gonna be nominations for album of the year. I think. Yeah, but you know. probably. Which. I mean, I, that segue doesn't make sense because it's outside of the YouTube <laughs> corner. But because <laughs> Jacob Collier got nominated for Album of the Year. Yeah, he did. With Jesse Volume 3. And it was incredible. It made me happy, which is a song I released that's not in the corner. So I'm stepping out of the corner real quick. Doot, doot, doot. I'm going to talk about it for a second. <laughs> uh, he released a cover of the Christmas song, which is the Chestnuts Roasting on an Open Fire song. And it's really fucking pretty. Uh, if you want to get in the Christmas spirit, Give it a listen. It's yummy. All right. Do, 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 do. Step back into the corner. <laughs> what? <laughs> one more. We got one, we got one more person to talk about in the corner. And hey, he's everyone's favorite boy. It's Jonathan Young. Ooh. Hey. Freaking. Really, I have two songs uh, on my list this month from him. One of them is, is a cover of Fireflies, which was very recent. And it, like caught me, wow. caught me off guard. I was like, "Whoa, look at that!" And I threw it on there. I was very a song cool. That came to... out when I was in middle school. Jesus Christ! Yeah, I Christ. know, right? And I, it was so <laughs> cool Owl to hear. A, yeah, it was so cool to hear a version of that song with like the guitar being like the boop 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 shit that happens in that song with the guitar doing it. It was really cool. Really like drove it forward, and I liked it a lot. Um, but the one I really want to talk about in this corner blowing through everything else to get to it is land of broken dreams featuring caleb hiles wasn't that uh, an, an original, original song yes it is an yeah. original song they wrote it together uh because they were apparently working on some stuff wink mm. wink we'll see when that happens mm. uh and this was a song they made last second they just they were like fuck it we're doing it and it was not going to be part of the the thing wink wink that they're making but uh it's just they threw it out there because they're like this song's cool and it fucking slaps. I like it a lot. It came out like, I think like November 1st. Like it was like. Yeah, I feel like I saw it drop on YouTube like a long time ago. Yeah, it was like the beginning of the month. It was, it's the first thing on my playlist. Uh, and it is a banger. I love it. I mean, the two of the Caleb, I don't ever put his stuff on here. Uh, usually because I, I subscribe to him and I listen to his stuff sometimes. But uh, I really love it when he collaborates with other people because Caleb's voice is out of this world. The thing I remember him for doing is he did a cover of the Ruby theme from like the first yeah, season. Yeah, yeah. And he does it in the original key as a dude. Which is impressive as a man and to be able to I do that fought, in that key. I, I legitimately shit myself listening to it for the first time. And every time I listen to it, I have corresponding shits to match with the, the high notes that he <laughs> produces. And it's incredible. <laughs> it's a Man-board. it's a proven laxative for Kyle Steinley. <laughs> <laughs> it's the YouTube corner <laughs> laxative stamp of approval. <laughs> it's great. Oh, FDA approved. Get your shits out. <laughs> clean and fast. <laughs> you want to have a clean shit? Listen to Caleb. <laughs> I'm sorry, Caleb. <laughs> You're a great person. It's like the worst sounding compliment ever. <laughs> I, know. I, I mean, hey, Caleb, it's all right. If you listen to this, which you're not, you're a Dallas wow. school fan, and they're going to be better this year, probably. So you got to yeah, win. That's in the what basket. they always say. <laughs> yeah, <I> mean, <laughs> you're not wrong. But that's enough nerd talk. <laughs> um, that's my YouTube corner. Thanks for coming. Come on back next next month, not next week. This is a monthly thing, and uh, you're welcome. Cool. I also have things that aren't the YouTube corner. Okay, so cool. We can cut the bit. It's over now. Uh, <laughs> Blow up the cut corner. The we don't need it anymore. Yeah, <clears throat> just destroy the theme song. It's over. We'll make a new one. Don't. I love it. It's like my child. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> Um, the only thing that I really want to talk about, because like I said, it's a sparse month for me, uh, were a song, it was a song on the radio by Dua Lipa. I don't listen to Dua Lipa, <laughs> but I was just driving one day <laughs> and the song came on and I was like, this kind of slaps. And I, so I, I, I downloaded it and I was like, this is cool. And so I put it on my playlist because I liked it a lot and I've been listening to it a lot. Because it's really good. It's Dua, Lu- Dua Lipa featuring the baby. Yeah. And Dupa I love- Lupa featuring the baby. We got a du- <laughs> Dupa nice Lupa song featuring Doo Boo Boo. It's my favorite <laughs> song. 
<laughs> oh, no, da I, baby. Yeah, <laughs> da baby. Uh, I don't know if you guys got to check it, uh, got to check it out, but it, it's really fucking groovy. And the thing I like a lot about it is that I I've heard da baby on many tracks before, just randomly because he's a popular dude. He he does the rapping and it's great. Uh, something about like the timbre and tone of his voice when he raps. I think just really fits the genre. I'm not a huge like rap guy. I don't listen to it a ton. I have my occasional people I listen to with it uh, in that genre. But for some reason, I think his voice just really fits the style, the flow of rapping, especially the way he does it. And it's really pleasing. I like it a lot. And then in the choruses, when Dua Lipa singing, he's like doing, he's like doing like melodic stuff. Like he's doing like little ooh. And like, it's really low because like he doesn't have a high voice and it, it's really good. And then he does like auto tune stuff with his voice. And I was like, this is groovy as fuck. I didn't expect this to be playing on the radio today. And I <laughs> thoroughly enjoyed it. If I'm being completely honest, I don't know if it came out this month. I just started <laughs> hearing it on the radio. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> kind of breaks through. I, I think it did. I, we'll just I say hadn't it heard did. it before this month. It, sake. I started hearing it in the middle of the month. So... And I hadn't really, and it, it now gets played like fucking crazy. So I'm assuming that because it didn't play like crazy before the middle of this month, it probably didn't come out before this month. Probably. Yeah, we'll just say that. But yeah, it's really good. I liked it. And then Tyler, you, uh, sir, you, you did a little something. You put a little song on your playlist that I did not see came out. Well, which one would that be? Squares. Live strings version. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I rally Richie. Out. I forgot about I, that. I totally missed that, and so did Nico. I texted him today because I was How am I the one something. who caught that, I don't and you know. two didn't. Because <laughs> like we're, we're like the huge Rally Richie fans, I know. and you got you've been recently indoctrinated yeah. into the fandom. And as of that episode that hasn't yeah. been posted yet, that we recorded like several months ago, that I should probably upload soon. I'm, I'm coming out long. It already had come out a while before when we recorded it. But yeah, didn't it come out like review. July or something? Yes, it did. <laughs> yeah, I think we recorded. I think we Might recorded have been June. in like. Yeah, I feel like we recorded in like August, September. It's just uh, it goes to show yeah. you how much I don't edit these. <laughs> I mean, it's gonna come out because it will. I really it is gonna be review. the next album yeah. review. So for those of you who like the album reviews, oh, no. the next one coming out is is Andy by Raleigh Richie. So, um, pretty sure okay. we ranked Squares last, if I remember correctly, I but I don't we, know. Do we put it last? Well, I remember because that that's why I thought it was interesting that it was on your list, this single of mm-hmm. the live strings version, uh, because I remember you being like, I don't like that song that much. And Nico and I were like, but, 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 because like Nico and I, no, really I like the song. song. I just it, it was just yeah. very repetitive compared to the rest of the shit was my argument. And I think this live strings version really adds a lot to it, too. Kind of I liked it better it. than the original version. Yeah, honestly. Yeah. For sure. I mean, I don't know if I liked it more than the original, but I think it added so much to it to kind of tell a new, like, refreshing story that, mm-hmm. like, was a twist on the original that, like, you, like, kind of like your, what you had a grape with it being, like, very repetitive. It yeah. Really helped it flow more. And I, I loved it. And I, so I broke my rule of, like, I usually don't add things from other people's lists at last second, but I saw it and I was like, <laughs> I got it. It's Rally Richie. Come on. I got to do it. <laughs> Uh, so I added on there. I liked it a lot. Um, yeah, that was those were my singles. Nice. That's all I really want to talk about. I had some others on there, but y'all can check it out. I actually think I talked about all but one of them, but that's okay. Uh, uh, is, there, uh, <laughs> is there anything else that we, we want to go over before we hit our songs and albums of the month? Wait, I didn't even get it. Oh, did you not? Brennan has not gone yet. Oh, well, go ahead, Brennan. <laughs> <laughs> I guess just because I think because you... Talked about the aviation song. I guess that made me think that you went for some reason. Anyway, go ahead, Brennan. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Tyler. Uh, <laughs> man. Well, I'm only going to talk about... Uh... Well, there's three songs that came out this month that I'd like to touch on. Um, the rest of them were all right. But uh, and one of the songs I could even say is just all right. <laughs> um <laughs> cuz I know Tyler like hates his band but uh the first one I talk about is Blind Kings by Chelsea Grin e. <laughs> which yeah if that's any uh 
<laughs> that's what he like I don't know like identification of Tyler he fucking hates Chelsea Grin I'm not saying I hate Chelsea Grin but I hate Chelsea Grin <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so yeah so breaking news Tyler doesn't hate Chelsea Grin but hates Chelsea Grin <laughs> he doesn't hate them but he hates them <laughs> so yeah obviously they are pretty brutal um they I think I bring this up every time they, they like my song come out, but uh, they have like a newer vocalist. I guess he came in a couple years ago or whatever. His name's Tom Barber, and totally shifted the focus of the band. Uh, their old guy sounded like Marge Simpson. That's um, mainly why I hated them. <laughs> <laughs> so this dude, like the new guy, he actually has some range, and he's actually he can actually pull it off live. So oh well, that's good. Mad props. The other um, guy couldn't. <laughs> no, he couldn't at all. Uh, I actually I saw them with the old guy, and I was even like, uh, I don't know. I'm not sure I really fuck with this. But uh, yeah, I mean it's it's deathcore. You know I mean, what? <laughs> what more could you ask for? I mean, I thought it was heavy. You know they they actually managed to do like layered vocals, like also with the drummer. I guess he does like pretty like disgusting lows. Damn. So. They're actually able to pull that off live too, which just adds to a whole new dynamic. But you know, I don't know. I, I just I think the vocals are like way better now. So maybe that's why this band has like fallen back into favor for me. So but yeah, Blind King is not a bad tune. Um if you're into Deathcore, if you're not into Deathcore, then look away. But uh <laughs> <laughs> the second song I want to talk about, um, I haven't heard much from this band in a minute, but uh, I actually like showed Tyler some pretty freakish things that their drummer was doing. Um, there's actually a YouTube video of a drum teacher reacting to this guy, like doing like mm -hmm. a playthrough of a song, and man, it like it just blew my mind. Like the dude busts out brushes. <laughs> like, like for a part, I don't even, Which I don't is even just know. Wild to me. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't even know like what instrument is playing, but it's like really like, like ambient, mm -hmm. and like he has like brushes and like playing, and then all of a sudden you hear like the guitar like like a sick breakdown like start, and then like one click of the hi hat, and then just fucking into it. But uh, yeah, that song's called Escapist. Totally different song than what I have on my thing, but uh, the band's called Oceans Eight Alaska. Hell yeah! And the song's called Metamorph. That song is tasty as hell. Hell yes, dude. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> like they're they're known for coming up with like pretty like tasty stuff. Like their whole last album, uh, it's called Hakari, and mm -hmm. damn, it like it was it was like gent mixed with like I mean mostly gent, but like I don't know, it just got like groovy and you know just intricate licks. Like ew, like, it's so fucking tasty and. This new song is basically just an extension of that. Um, I guess they got their old old vocalist back, which he was from their original album called uh, Lost Isles. And, I mean, he does good. I mean, he, he has, like, some pitch screams that are kind of weird, but, I mean, like, the rest of it's pretty fucking tasty. Mm -hmm. But uh, check them out if you're, like, into, like, intricate guitar work and, like, drumming and stuff. Like, their drummer, I think, is underrated. Uh, his name's Chris Turner. Yeah. He's really fucking good. Oh yeah. <laughs> if you if you can bust out brushes <laughs> in in a gent song. Right. Like that and, <laughs> that alone. And like instantly go that? into a breakdown of regular sticks. Like you're automatically a fucking god. Shit is crazy, dude. But yeah, dude, Metamorph, Ocean's Eight Alaska. Yeah. That's man. a tasty track. And then we'll on to my final track. Um there's a band called Era. And it's era with two R's. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's going to trigger some grammar Nazis. But uh, I want to say like three months ago. I want to, I want to say it was our first episode of doing these. They had uh, a song called Snow Blood. And it was like way more. I mean, I guess like high energy is probably the only way I could like put it. But it was like different than their older stuff. Because, like, it just, like, came at you more. That's the only real way I could put it. But, uh, 
that song was really good. It was actually up towards one of my favorite singles of the year. And House of Glass is like different, but like in a similar vein. Um, like I, I don't know, man. It's, just, it's like it's aggressive, and then like the choruses are intricate. Um, the breakdowns in it. I mean, I just got fucking exploded. By it. <laughs> <laughs> just the breakdowns in it. I'm like, dude, like, this is detonation up in here. But uh, yeah, I mean, sick fucking track. I mean, if you're looking for, I mean, they they can even be a little bit intricate in guitar work. Um, if you're looking for something that's heavy, if you're looking for something that, you know, has some tasty choruses. I mean, both the singer and the screamer. Like the screamer also does like clean vocals, but like, I mean, you can tell they're like two different dudes. Mm-hmm. But uh, it it's just like it all comes together in just this nice package that. I don't know. I I would kill to see that band live. Them and Ocean's Eight Alaska. Mm-hmm. Like if I could see both of them live, that would be an incredible show. Oh, for sure. So I would die in the pits, but like it'd oh, be I'd fun. be fucking mad. <laughs> <laughs> Just straight up, it'd be we'd lose Tyler. <laughs> so, but yeah, those are the three singles I want to talk about. Um, the rest of them are okay. They're not. I mean, I have like unprocessed on my list, you know, but. I don't know. We already talked them, talked about them, so. Yeah. 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 I'm not cutting any of that. We're on to songs and albums of the month. <laughs> You've just been Rickrolled. Who would like to go first? I nominate Kyle. Okay. Um, I, <laughs> I guess, uh, <laughs> you know it's gonna be a little unexpected my song of the month um but i think i'm gonna go with good riddance the cover of the the hades song damn yeah i was really impressed by it a because i don't know if you knew this that the duet in the harmony is not originally in the song he re- he made that oh uh it, and it's already a love song like, or like it's it's kind of like because in Hades it's like one person saying to another person but they're like they've been separated and so like the fact that he added the duet to make it like like connect the dots of the original idea is really cool and the fact that he sang really well in it really impressed me and it's also Hades and I love that entire soundtrack and that song is already beautiful and it almost heightened it and that impressed I didn't think it could be done and he did it and it impressed me so I'm gonna give it to him. It was really good. Damn. Um, very chill song. Very sweet, soothing melody, and it's beautiful. Um, and then for album of the month, it's close. It's really close. Oh, it's so close. I can almost taste it. <laughs> um, if the Dirty Loops album would have a been longer and b had more songs on it than two that were new, I would give it to it. And yeah. the way it is right now, it's already really close. So you know that album was good, but. That Bill Murray album was so fucking good this yeah, month, man. I know we didn't talk about it in this episode, so if you want to know why I like it that much, check out a review of it because it's oh, Eggy Pocket. <laughs> I cannot stop listening to it. It is so. It's probably the most listened to thing this month. It is. Ooh, baby. Ooh, it's so good. It I, really I have is, to give, man. I have to give it to them. And then the Your Cool Ed album actually got really close too. It was definitely. I was like, hmm maybe <laughs> and then i was like ah oh, no dirty loops and bill murray's albums were be- like edged it out for me definitely but fair enough know, dude i respect the bill that. the bill murray album i gotta give it to aggie pocket the man the man's a wizard yeah i fully respect that yeah brennan i think you should be next because you threw me threw me into the fiery flames oh i threw you directly under the bus thank you the bus <laughs> hurt and now it's your turn to get hit by a bus what do you got for your well. singles and your album I am going to start off with the disclaimer that Bill Murray's Eggy Pocket might make it into my top 10 of 2020. I 100% agree. I agree. I think think it is. I mean, I thought Bill Murray for a while was a bit of a one-trick pony. Mm -hmm. Um. And I mean, I don't mean that like disrespectfully, but I feel like a lot of his 
Like a lot of his like choruses, like especially the guitar work in them, like sounded like irritably similar, but it was still like good music. But man, Aggie Pocket, my man, <laughs> just fucking smashed everything I loved and knew dear and held dear to my heart when thinking of Bill Murray and replaced it with new and better. Um, it's probably my favorite album of the month, but. In order to keep it different, I'm going to... No, I don't keep it different. Go with your heart. Go with your gut. Go with your instinct. Holy shit. I was going to say, just to have a different flavor, I was going to go with Intervals. But... I mean, I wouldn't have blamed you there either. That album fucking slaps. Because, I mean, spoiler album's... alert, I'm going to pick Intervals. So you're going to be you're gonna oh. be hopping on a bandwagon oh, regardless. Oh, really? So, yeah. Holy Damn. shit. So just go with your heart, man. <laughs> Where does your heart lead you? I got to go Aggie Pocket. That Hell yeah, really I yeah. mean intervals, I love it. It it's probably more in my top fifteen than it is my top ten. I feel that it's definitely yeah. um, somewhere in just because I had a lot of shit come out this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and a lot of it I thought was incredible, and I think intervals is probably knocking at the door at eleven. Fair enough, uh, being Frank, but I don't know where Johnny Frank and Bill Murray. <laughs> 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 that was nice. I like that. I don't know where they fall in, or he falls into my top ten <laughs> with Aggie Pocket. So I'm gonna hop on Kyle's bandwagon. Let's go Aggie Pocket by Bill Murray. Hell Check yeah. that Join episode the, out if you haven't. Join the egg side, baby. It's get good us over to sixty nine subscribers. Nice. Yes. Ooh, it's time. It's, 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 it's time to have the milestone. Everyone's been waiting for it. <laughs> All of my family was like Kyle. Why do you still do this podcast? And I went, shut up. I want to get the 69 subscribers. And, and then we're I almost quit. There. And then we're done. We <laughs> shut the channel down. We hit 69. It's done. That's all we yeah. wanted. And then, and then your family's like, Kyle, we totally understand. And I'm like, thank Just you. Just kidding. After we hit 69, we're on the journey to 420. Of course we are. Mm. And then we're on the journey to, to freaking, I don't know, 60. I was going to say 69, 69. But then I realized that would be after like 4,200. But like 20, 2048. 2048. There you go. That's something. Well, no, we gotta get this. We gotta get the 1776 <laughs> to respect our nation. Wow. Yeah. Marco. Brennan, what's your what's your single of the month? Oh man, probably House of Glass from Era. Fair enough. It just. I mean, like I said, I mean, Ocean's Eight Alaska Metamorph is a close second. But I mean, I just got blown the fuck up by House of Glass, like. I'm surprised Breakdowns. you didn't go with Aviations, considering how much you went off about it at the beginning. Well, because I'm trying to keep it. I mean, I don't even have Bill Murray on my playlist, but for whatever reason. Oh. We actually, you know what? <laughs> Fuck it. I am going to go Outliers <laughs> by Aviations. Yeah. That, I mean, I love Era. That song is incredible, but man, Outliers of Aviations. That shit. It's 11 <laughs> minutes and 36 seconds long, but it's like... <laughs> Um, it's like, okay, you strap in and you watch like a three hour movie, but like all of it just is so captivating. Yeah. And like, that's that song. Inaccurate. Like, like, uh, Periphery has a 16 minute song called Reptile. Oof. It's like the same thing (laughs) where it's like the entire thing. Like I'm on the edge of my seat, like get ready to fucking throw down. And then there's like, you know, there's like, like catchy choruses and stuff and but Outliers Aviation, like, the fucking piano work, like, the dude, <clears throat> uh, the guy kind of sounds like, he's a, uh, he sounds like a guy from a band called Sleep Token. I don't know if you've ever heard oh, of Oh, yeah, them. yeah, I've listened to them. But, like, their, their voices are similar, but I feel like the dude from Aviation's, like, he, like, does more. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, dude, fuck, fuck it. Outliers from Aviation, that shit slaps. <laughs> Good Holy shit. Holy shit. <laughs> like everything was not on your playlist that you had because <laughs> i figured Damn. it'd be on well i mean i didn't know about outliers till tyler brought it up but like yeah yeah bill you know i figured bill murray would be on both you guys playlists so yeah that's fair. that's fair yeah um as i said before i am picking circadian by intervals for my album of the month i thought it was going to be bill murray i really did all month i was like nothing can top bill murray and then uh, I listened to this, and I was like, you know, this, like, the Bill Murray album is incredible. His best work, by far. This, like, 
This makes me see through alternate dimensions. Like, this shit is just fucking insanely layered and crazy and good. Like, you know a song is good when, like, I just... I get into the head bobbing, I'm making weird faces, and I'm just getting so... I just feel it. I feel the music. You know? That's that's what this album does to me. And, you know, that's a... That's a that's a cool thing, you know. Not not every album can do that. Um, and as much as I love the Bill Murray album, um, and at the end of the day, I mean, I might rank the Bill Murray album over this one, but I haven't really thought about it too much. So I'm just gonna go with my gut here. I'm gonna say uh, "Circadian" by Intervals is my album of the month. Uh, for single of the month, that's a bit trickier. I don't actually know what I want to pick. It's fair. I didn't know what I was going to pick until like literally the last second either. So, because it, it uh, yeah, is you, a very <laughs> tough month of singles. You literally had to talk me into it. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say, for variety's sake. No, go with your gut. That was literally your whole point. Well, no, this is also with my gut, but also oh, okay. because it's different. Um, because it is very up All in right. the air between a few things. But I think I'm going to go surrounded by Wage War just because. I got I got a new Wage War song this month, and I wasn't expecting it, and it's a fucking, it's a B-side from Blueprints, like, yes, please and thank you, like, yeah, I'm happy about it. Surrounded by Wage War, single of the month. I'm nice. Done. It's, it's done, I'm locking it in. <laughs> and the, the votes are in, and... Bill Murray wins. Uh... Yeah, Bill Murray, <laughs> Bill Murray wins is the... the the lesson you should have learned from this episode of the podcast is go listen to our episode of our Bill Murray review. <laughs> if you haven't learned anything from this entire podcast that you're almost done with, go listen to another podcast. Yeah. And all the way through it to its entirety. That's how we do it here. It's also, it make sure... I, I always forget to say this at the end of these episodes, but we have posted all of our playlists in the description of oh, this yeah. video. Um, so, if you are curious to you know listen to any of the songs we talked about or any of the songs that we didn't talk about um just other shit that came out that we didn't have time to talk about go in the description all of our playlists are there they're labeled listen to everybody's shit and you know let us know there's shit that you liked there's shit you didn't like just comment anything if it's your birthday today comment that it's your birthday and I'll dislike it from our account, and you'll know it was me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Way to just fuck someone trying to like, help us. Birthday present to you, a dislike. Congratulations. Well, we yeah, like everyone's present. comments. We fuck never dislike you. people's comments. Just trying to make you feel special. You don't like make us you... feel special, though. Yeah. If you liked the video and didn't dislike it. We only like comments that special. talk about us. If it's yeah. talking about yourself and your stupid little birthday. Yeah, exactly. Oh, we only God, want to hear about us. Here. We're very self-centered, egotistical people. We only want to hear <laughs> you singing our praises. So do that, please, and thank you. And if you, uh, if you actually do like us and respect our opinions for some reason, make sure that you click that like button. Yeah, go subscribe to the Talks a Lot, boys. Do all of the stuff that would make us happy. Follow us on social media. Do all the things. Tell your friends to check out our shit. We are we are but a humble three lads and another three lads that are sometimes on some other shows that we do. And all we're just we're just hanging out, just having a grand old time, and uh, we want you to be having a, a great time with us. So if you did, just bring bring some other people into the mosh pit of joy. That is the talks a lot, boys. <laughs> Get us to sixty-nine subscribers. We're literally one away as of the time of this recording. Make it You're happen. Make our right dreams come true. I Be the sixty-nine so subscriber. Close. Make history happen. <laughs> you could be the one, and if it is you, post and tag us. I was the sixty-ninth subscriber. Yes, if you are the sixty-ninth subscriber, screenshot it. Let us know who you are. And we'll shout you out on social media. <laughs> Absolutely. We will you will be our greatest subscriber. You will be a rank above the rest. Yeah. And uh That's it. That's Even all. if you're a bot, we'll still do it. 
Oh, yeah. You're a bot. <laughs> we'll still praise that bot because they, they were 69. Because so. they took us to the funny number. That's all we care about. That's all we're here for. Yeah. And then we're on the quest of 420, which will be a much bigger feat. But, you know, we made it this far. Maybe we can get that far, too. We'll but see not what today. the future holds. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess, I guess that's it for today's installment of this month's music. Uh, the year's last installment of this month in music. Our next episode will be our year in music for the year of 2020. It's going to be a big old heckin' thick boy of an episode. We're going to go over... Uh, I don't exactly know how we're going to format it yet because we haven't planned this out, but I know for a fact that we're going to be talking about our albums of the year. Um, we're going to be nominating a lot of shit that we have talked about over the years, over the years, Jesus, over the months, uh, throughout <laughs> the year that came out this year. And uh, <laughs> we're going to be we're going to be reminiscing and talking about just all of the absolute dank shit that came out in this horrendous year of 2020. So you don't want to miss it. Make sure you're there for it. We can't wait to, to share that with you. We have been the Talks Love Boys, and we're going to talk a whole lot more next time. We'll see you next year. Whoa. See ya. Thank you.